So today I want to demonstrate to you how Linear Starnet++ works and what some of the parameters do. I then want to show you or talk to you about a possible use case for it. And finally I'll compare it to traditional Starnet and finally Star Exterminator, the new kid on the block. This was suggested in the comments section of my last video on Star Exterminator versus Starnet++. You can see a link up here hopefully somewhere. Let's dive in. So this image of NGC 3576, the Statue of Liberty Nebula, all I've done to it so far is, and this is my HA data, all I've done to it so far is cropped it and done a background extraction and some simple noise reduction on the image. Um, and then what I did was I went up to script and as long as you've got a recent version of PixInsight, it'll be here, go up to script, utilities, linear starnet. If I open that up, it has two sections to it, the auto MTF parameters and the starnet parameters. Now the starnet parameters are just your stock standard starnet parameters. Uh, you can choose your stride and whether you want a star mask or not. Um, I usually work for me with a stride of 64, but that's up to you. To explain what the MTF parameters do, we need to know two things. The first is, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, Starnet requires a stretched image for it to work effectively. So what this auto MTF parameters section is going to do is it's going to take a copy of your image, stretch it in a very specific way, run Starnet on that stretched image, and then reverse the stretch in a very specific way. And it actually uses another process to do that. So the auto MTF parameters are going to be using a process called auto histogram. So let's close linear starnet briefly and open up auto histogram. So auto histogram is a process so it's found under the process menu all processes auto histogram. Okay now you don't actually need to use this to run linear starnet I'm just showing you what the pieces do um, so that you can hopefully use them effectively when you're running linear starnet. Okay, so auto histogram has two parts to it as well. Histogram clipping and target median. And they align perfectly with what we're going to see in linear starnet. Histogram clipping is turned off by default. Okay, you need to turn it on if you'd like to use it. So talking firstly about the target median values, this is asking us where would we like, when we've stretched it, where would we like the peak of the histogram to end up from 0 to 1? And generally we want it to be roughly what I call space grey. Okay, and that happens to occur around 0.1-ish on the histogram. So the default here is really nice. It's, it's pretty much, this works out of the box with the default setting. Okay, and then you can choose whether you'd like to run histogram clipping or not. The shadow clipping, which is what Linear Starnet is going to use, the idea here is once you've done your stretch and you know where the peak of the histogram is going to be, it can then move in that black point ever so slightly just to clip the blacks very slightly. And the idea is that that can help improve contrast. You don't want to push it too far or you put, you're clipping too much of the blacks. You kind of want to find the sweet spot so that you can improve the contrast without overly clipping the blacks. And that's all that you need for an auto histogram. So I'll close that. And we'll go back to script, utilities, linear starnet. Okay, so that's all this auto MTF section is doing. It's asking you where would you like the peak of your histogram to be, and the default here is perfect, and how much of the shadows would you like to clip. Okay, and all this information I glean from RBA's book. That's, I read about the auto uh, histogram and then I had a bit of a play with it. So I got a sense of exactly what linear Starnet was doing here. And then I could make meaningful adjustments of these two values. Um, I found the defaults are pretty damn good for my data and, and I haven't really needed to adjust them. So all I've done, and I've already done it to save us time because we all know how low Starnet can be. Um, I, I changed the the stride here to 64 and I did create a star mask. I kept these as absolute defaults and then I executed that on my image. And what it does is a copy of your image, 
stretches it, uh, clips it slightly, runs Starnet, and then reverses that process. So it essentially unstretches and unclips it back to uh, being a linear image. So I'll close this. As I said, it'll take too long to run and you don't really want to watch that. Uh, but this was the results here. So I've got a starless image and I've got my stars as well. And they've both been STF stretched here. That's why they're showing green. And this was the result. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but I can see uh, the background's quite splotchy, which is what I tend to see with Starnet images. But there's no crazy artifacts that I would expect to see. If, if you run Starnet on a, a linear image, normal Starnet on a linear image, you'll get all these weird black squares all over the place and your stars will look weird. Okay, but that, that hasn't happened here because it has correctly stretched the image, run Starnet, and then unstretched it. Uh, and it looks quite nice. So I said one possible use case for this scenario would be if you wanted to run deconvolution on the starless image, which means you don't have to stress about uh, ringing artifacts around stars. Uh, I'm not going to do that now because again deconvolution is quite time consuming, but that is a use case that you could use this for. I just want to show you how linear Starnet works today. The next thing I did was I took this a copy of this image and I actually ran a normal histogram stretch on it and then ran normal Starnet. This, this is the result. So I took this image, stretched it using a normal histogram stretch, and then ran normal Starnet on it. And then the second thing I did was I took this linear Starnet image that I've got here and applied exactly the same stretch to it. So we could compare them, see if they're any different. Um, so here's the two results. So I've got my non-linear Starless and what I called my linear stretch. So this was the linear Starnet and then I stretched it exactly the same way. And if I zoom in to the statue here, for instance, and then an identical view of that, I can't see any difference between the two, uh, except for maybe this, this artifact here. That's about all I can see that's different between the two. The backgrounds look pretty well identical. The contrast looks pretty much identical. I'm not sure how that'll come across on YouTube, but on my monitor, um, they, they both look pretty much identical. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference if I'd done a blind test here. And perhaps that's a positive. Maybe that's the idea that we, we can be confident knowing that if we now run linear Starnet at the linear stage, do our deconvolution, stretch as normal, the image is going to look pretty well the same as if I did my deconvolution as I would normally do, stretched it and then ran um, Starnet. All right, so the final thing I'm going to do is run Star Exterminator on this linear data. In my previous video, I ran Starnet and Star Exterminator on non-linear data, to be fair to them. But today we're working with linear Starnet, so it makes sense to try Star Exterminator on linear data. So you need to tick linear data here. I'm not going to worry about the star image for this. I just want to look at the starless. And I'll run this in real time just to show you that Star Exterminator really is much quicker than Starnet, assuming your computer's not running slow for whatever reason, as mine seems to be. Probably because I'm recording uh, this video. So there is my Starnet, uh, my Star Exterminator starless image. Here's my linear Starnet image. And again, I don't know how it comes across on YouTube, but the difference is night and day between these two images. The background is so much smoother on the Star Exterminator image compared to the Starnet image. Um, and when I first made the video on uh, Star Exterminator, I did say that there was some potential um, contrast issues in, in terms of, I guess you could call them blurriness uh, issues in terms of um, some loss of contrast and sharpness in the nebulosity. Uh, with the latest AI builds from Star Exterminator, uh, that doesn't seem to be the, the case anymore. And maybe it's just that I'm using better quality data now from some of my um, longer integration time images, but it definitely looks like the contrast and, and uh, sharpness of the latest batches of Star Exterminator are, are improving. They're looking very good. So if you don't have Star Exterminator and you don't want to purchase it, linear Starnet does look like it does a, a decent job and will work nicely for 
running deconvolution while linear, for instance, but I still think Star Exterminator on your linear image is, is going to be night and day much better because it comes out with a much smoother result. All right, that's it for today. Uh, hopefully you have a, a better understanding now of how linear StarNet does what it does and what the settings do. Um, and hopefully you've seen a, a nice use case for it if you want to run deconvolution uh, on a starless image so you don't have to stress about um, some of your de-ringing issues. Um, it, that's a great uh, use case for it. Um, and, and it looks like once you've stretched it, you can't even tell the difference between it and StarNet, which is exactly what you'd want. Um, but hopefully you also agree that uh, Star Exterminator, the new kid on the block, still, even for linear StarNet, blows it out of the water. Uh, thanks for watching.